and welcome back. Now today, as you can see from the display in front of you, I'm going to be talking about seven segment displays because I've got a project coming up where I want to display some numbers on an LED like this. And I thought I'd play around first and see how we can do it in the simplest manner. And this is it. And as you see, I've got a little counter running here and it's all looking hunky-dory, except, well, I'm hoping at least you're thinking, oh my goodness, what are all those wires doing there? And yes, you'd be correct. This is a little bit of a wire fest because each of the individual segments of an LED requires a wire to it. Whilst the rightmost digit here is paralleled to this one here, and we only have one wire per digit being controlled by the uh, UNO, we still need eight individual cables to control the eight segments. Well, that's seven segments plus the decimal point, if you need it. So how does an Arduino manage to light up multiple digits? Now, as you can see from this demo sketch I've got running here, I'm lighting up, first of all, one digit, and then the other digit. Why? Well, let's think about this for a minute. We've only got eight data lines coming in, and these data lines are shared between as many digits as we would have here. As it happens, we've only got two, but we could have four or six or eight. So, if we wanted to light up all these digits in one go, well, for a start, it would mean that the data lines would have to supply current to each of the segments within each digit for all digits, which would immediately overload that pin. And secondly, the total power consumed would probably overload the Arduino anyway, because it just couldn't provide that much power. For example, let's assume that one of these segments takes about 10 milliamps. I think it's, it's between 10 and 20 anyway. So if you had two, that's 20 milliamps. If you had four, that's 40 milliamps. Now that's right on the edge of what a pin can really do. And in fact, the recommendation is to keep it down to 20. So by only displaying one digit at a time, each of the pins that are supplying power to each of the segments it's only doing it for one at a time. So the maximum amount of power at any one time for any single pin is only 10 milliamps. I hope you're following this. Okay, so we're only supplying 10 per wire on here. So this little bunch I've grabbed here, there's four wires there. Each is supplying 10, assuming that those corresponding segments are actually being lit. Now, by switching from digit to digit like that, we're trying to display the value here 2.5, which is a bit pants, isn't it? I mean, it doesn't look like 2.5. So let's speed this up a little bit. And I'm going to zoom in so you get a better view of what actually happens. Right, there we are, a nice close view. And I'm just going to turn this little pot here that I've got, and I'm going to make it flash a little bit faster. So as I turn to the left, you'll see that the flashing rate between digits is getting quicker. Look. Now that's still not good enough, is it? You can almost understand that sort of one value, but not quite. So let's keep speeding it up and speeding it up. Now look, at this point, although it's very flickery, you do get the sense now that it is supposed to be one value. That sort of says 2.5. Let's speed it up a bit more. So I'm speeding there, now look. To my naked eye, even looking at it directly, I can see a small amount of flicker with my naked eye looking at this, but looking through the camera, maybe a slight um, change in brightness perhaps on here and here, maybe, but we're still only displaying first this digit, then this digit. So the maximum amount of power coming down these lines is still only 10 milliamps per segment. But it just looks like to us as though both digits are on at the same time. How can this be true? Well, this is what's known as persistence of vision, POV. Nothing to do with point of view. This is persistence of vision. And it just looks like they're on. But as I can prove by turning this pot again, and so they're turning on and off at a much slower rate, 
we can see that's all I'm doing. I'm not actually turning on both digits at the same time at all, no matter how convincing that looks. We're just speeding it up and turning on one digit after another. And that is multiplexing. Pretty simple, really. And it enables us, one, to reduce the current, so it's only a maximum of, say, 10 milliamps, if that's what each one of these segments is taking. And, of course, it enables us to limit it to eight data lines one for each segment and then they're shared Ooh, there goes my acetate sheet they're shared the data lines between all digits so if we had another two on here they too would be shared as you can see these wires on this side here and down the bottom here are just connecting directly to the same pins on the other digit but each one of these digits is being controlled independently by two further pins here, these two as it happens, and they're being switched off one by one. But it looks like to us as though they're on all the time. So it's brilliant. So it's less power being used, and it means the Arduino can display a proper value in multiple digits that otherwise it just couldn't handle. Okay, that's what multiplexing is. There can be a lot more to it. You might want to read up about Charlie plexing as well, which... Um, I don't know, it's come to the fore recently, but it's been around for absolutely donkey's years. It's just a variant of multiplexing, really. Okay, that's it. Let's get back to the main sketch that we were talking about. So it's a little bit of a wire fest, but it looks messy on a breadboard. Always does, doesn't it? What else is wrong with this setup? Well, for that, we need to pan back a bit and have a look at uh, the bigger picture, as it were. So let's pan back and we can have a look at code and discuss the approach. Right, so here we have it all running and it seems to be displaying what you'd expect it to see on a seven segment display. It's a nice little counter, it's running great. So what's the problem then, apart from this bird's nest of wires, which would look a lot tighter, of course, if it was done in a project? Well, the first thing, of course, is that each of these segments needs a wire. So on this um, Uno, we're already using up eight 9, 10. So that's 8 for the segments plus 2 to control the individual digits. So that's 10 and the library I'm using, which I'll come on to in just a sec, can run up to four of these seven segment displays. So if we were to add another two, that would take up the remaining two digital IOs we have on here, not counting pin 0 and 1, which we need for the USB anyway which would mean we'd have no digital pins left for anything else at all, which would be a bit of a disaster because we'd have to then move to a, a mega or something like that just to display some numbers. That's not the whole story, though. Let's have a look at the code window and see uh, any issues we might have there. So this is the code. Now, the library I'm using is this one called sevseg.h. And uh, it's really quite a nice library, actually. It does exactly what it is you'd expect. It's very easy to set up. You tell it how many digits you've got, which you've got the um, digits connected to. That is the common cathode or common anode. And then these ones here correspond exactly to the A, B, C, D, E, right up to the decimal point of your seven-segment display. And that's all very well, and it runs around in this loop. But if you notice this little comment here... It says, must run repeatedly, that is to say, refresh display. And I've been playing about here, as you can say, with a little delay in here, to think, well, if we weren't just doing this, and we wanted to do other stuff with our Arduino, how much stuff could we get done before the display looked a bit rubbish? So let's um, keep that running in the corner there. And in fact, I'm going to zoom in on that display. There we are. So now we can see exactly what's going to happen if we start introducing a, display, a delay here to emulate what's going on. Well, first of all, let's have a 25 millisecond delay because 25 milliseconds is, um, well, you can probably get a little bit of work done in that before things start uh, slowing down. So let's um, upload that and... Uh, see how that affects things. Right, there it goes, uploading, the display is blank, so it should come on in a second. Right, there it goes. 
Now that's that's not bad. 25 milliseconds. Look, it's um, I can detect a small amount of flicker now, especially on the camera. But apart from that, it is still running reasonably well. I think we can say at this point. So what happens if we wanted to have 125 milliseconds of delay? And you might think, whoa, 125 milliseconds. That's that's quite a delay. Well, not really. If you're moving a servo or a stepper motor or trying to get the temperature from a DS18B20, all these things can take a relatively long period of time to do before you get the response back. And they are sometimes blocking operations. That is to say, nothing else runs whilst you're doing those operations. So if you were to, say, try and get the temperature, it might take 50 milliseconds just to get the, the temperature. And then, of course, you've got other stuff to run as well. So let's let's pretend now we've, we've got a delay of 125 and see what that does to our little display down here. So the display's gone off. It's uploading the code. Whoa, dear, that, that is mm, not acceptable. That's just with 125 milliseconds display. Oh, dear, what are we going to do? Because I've got some stuff to do in the Arduino. I'm going to be using a Nano in my project. And I want it to be able to do stuff without the display corrupting like this. Imagine if we had four digits, the problem would probably get worse. Hmm. Well, the good news is that I'm working towards showing you the TM1637 driver chip, which does all this display nonsense in two wires. You just communicate it to the actual chip and display with two wires and it gets on with it while your Arduino is doing something else. And it doesn't require this repeated refresh of the display for the display to look anything like normal. So if we are going to use this, we'll kill that display again and just recompile to get something running nicely on it. Ah, oh, there we go. Thank goodness for that. But it's not going to be a lot of use, is it? Unless we can get that display sorted out. Right, a couple of other words on this um, LED then, just before we move off. You notice I've got some red acetate on here, because if I take that off, it's much, much harder to read. Um, so this um, acetate you can get for um, on eBay for not very much money at all, and it's used for lighting, um, PAR36 lighting or something like that, theatre studio lighting, and it's probably a couple of quid a sheet for an A4 sheet. So that's pretty good. And also, I just happen to have here um, an infrared cut filter for my camcorder, this one here, I think. If I don't get the other, that makes it actually look a little bit deeper. Let me um, let me zoom in a little bit, see if my macro works. All right, there we are. Yeah, that looks uh, pretty good. So you can, to the naked eye, to my naked eye, looking at this directly, it looks a lot better, or a bit better, than what you're seeing it on the camera. But it still looks pretty good with that acetate sheet on it. Right then, so in order to avoid this rat's nest of wires and to um, stop the continual refresh required to make this do anything worthwhile, let's move on to the TM1637 driver, which I'm going to connect up as soon as it turns up in the post because I'm waiting for it. But that'll be coming pretty soon and we'll see what difference it makes from this setup to the new one. So keep a mental image of this because the next time you see it, we're going to have the new one all set up and we'll see what advantages that brings. See you in a bit. I hope you're finding these videos useful and interesting. Please leave comments down below, subscribe, share and give me a thumbs up. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.